Hey guys, welcome to our channel, the number one place for designers, artists and creators. My name is Les, I'm a graphic designer and illustrator and in this video I'm going to show you how you can color in your hand-drawn sketches using Adobe Photoshop. In my previous video I have shown you how you can use your hand-drawn sketch as an underdrawing and redraw the whole line art using Adobe Illustrator. So if you're after a full digital illustration tutorial, please check out the previous video. So in this video we will take hand drawn line art, clean it up nicely and render it using Adobe's Photoshop. First things first, bring your drawing into your computer. If you have a scanner, by all means, scan your drawing in, although a decent enough photo taken with your smartphone should do you just fine in my experience. Here you can see I have taken a picture of my sketchbook drawing using my phone, upload it to my cloud and then I just checked and dropped it into Photoshop. Now open a new document of your preferred dimensions. I usually work on an A3 sized page for illustrations with at least 300 point per inch and paste your drawing to this document. The first thing I do here is I go to image adjustments and take the saturation down so it's only black and white shades I need to worry about. Then I go back to adjustments, open up the levels panel and play around with these side scrolling bars here until the background pretty much disappears and the drawing gets as dark as I would like it to be. Also have a white background under your drawing and use that as a reference point just to see how white my drawing background should be in order to be fully transparent. Play around with the brightness and contrast as well a little. Ok, now we have our base layer. The way we are going to color this in is to set some layers to multiply mode. When you set a layer to multiply, it means that other layers will only pick up the dark pixels from this layer which means we can paint over the white parts of the image and the dark under drawing will show through. So for the base colors I use the magnetic lasso tool and the bucket fill as well as occasionally fill in some gaps with a small hard brush until everything has a basic tint. I usually fill one object in with one color first then I go back to change and adjust specific parts within the objects. As you can see my composition is made up by all these random bits and bobs, lots of things to color in but I don't want to end up with every color under the sun here, so every now and then I stop and zoom out to check if my colored objects work together as a set. Once everything has got a flat color, I start adding highlights and shadows. I do these on separate layers using low opacity brushes on overlay mode layers. Just by setting your brush to black and then white, you can create a nice rendering effect. In terms of practical advice on coloring, I would say have some ideas of a possible color scheme before you start working on your colors and then try sticking to it. Have a rough idea on what you think the prominent shades will be. For example, I'm creating a very warm, cozy brown scene here. 
So all I'm really doing is trying to make sure every other color I'm bringing in sits well together with this main shade. If you need further help on what colors to start with, I often use Adobe's color library, which you can use for inspiration. You can do a quick search if you have a vague idea of what you want and it will give you some pretty good examples you might want to use. You can download these and Photoshop will automatically store them in your swatches panel. I also add some prominent shadows and highlights with the same brush but this time on a normal layer so we'll end up with actual black and white shading on the drawing. Now I want to add a very minimal background to my drawing. What I do here is I use the lasso tool to create an organic curvy looking shape and bucket fill it with one color. and I give it a heavy blur. I like to use Gaussian blur for this. Then I also want to add the sense of texture. I imagined wood panels in the background for this drawing, so what I'm going to do is I do a quick Google search for some wood texture imagery. I want to bring this image onto Adobe Illustrator. The reason for this is I don't want to have this image photorealistic in the background. So what I'm going to do is use this image trace option. Image trace is Illustrator's way of turning pixel based images into vectors by simplifying the color parts. You have a few different presets here which tells you what kind of vector version will you end up with. So feel free to have a play around with this function. The process takes a while but it is still a very quick and effective way of creating your own textures. Just make sure the image you are using is free to use. Generally speaking, I like to jump quite a lot between Illustrator and Photoshop within my illustration process, so if you are following along, these tutorials have them both open at all times. Ok, now I'm going to put this in the background, play with the layers of opacity and mode a little, until it looks something I like. And also clean things up a bit, so this new element feels organic to the composition. And there you have it. Thanks for watching my second illustration tutorial video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. I hope you can take some of these tips and tricks on board to using your own projects. And if you have any questions about this process, please just let me down in the comments and I'll, I'll do my best to help you out. Alright, see you next time. Bye.